Okay, so here we are back on the crankshaft. I got some plastic gates. I got tired of waiting on them to come in, so I went ahead and picked me up some more. It's okay, I'll get other plastic gauges. I'll be able to use those as well, because I got other stuff planned, not just this one engine rebuild. This is just what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna get this one good and running and everything, but I'm gonna continue on from there. But on this one in particular, this is what I did in last video, okay? You have, as you notice, I put some assembly loop underneath the main bearing caps before I put the main bearing caps on. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> uh, what I, That was one of the blunders that I did. That gave me an extra opportunity to take this crankshaft back out and double check that, you know, I had everything cleaned off completely the surfaces. So I was able to wipe all that oil off everything give the give the block another once over but i didn't want to have you guys sit through that <laughs> so i went ahead and did that off camera and then put the caps back in completely dry yeah and then i went ahead and applied some assembly loop to the journals i went ahead and put some on here on all the journals and the main bearing journals also and so now you can see that the as the crank just sits in here like butter yeah i made sure i checked the thrust bearing clearance okay so what i got here is i got my plastic gauge right and basically got you notice i got the hands man and cracked open right there boom it says to cut it just shorter than a connecting rod bearing so i'm gonna do it exactly like that you know it's just uh i know some of you guys are like oh, it doesn't really matter you know as long as you get close but i'm gonna go ahead and do it exactly as the book says to do it so we're gonna do that and uh, we'll move on from there. See what it gives us. All right, so uh, what I did, I still got some of the oil that's still on the you know, connecting rod journals here, but I wiped off the oil uh, that was on the main cap journals. One, two, three, four journals. Uh, just so that I could put this plastic gauge and set it straight. Straight line as possible, right on the crankshaft center line there. And I'll put that on each one of the four main cap journals. So as you can see, I got all the plastic gauges along the center line of the crank for all the main barrel, uh, main bearing journals. Now would not be a good time to sneeze, just so you know. I think that's pretty intuitive, but that's kind of how you want to have them laid out right there. Now I've already, like I told you, I was gonna go ahead and clean these up and not have you guys sit through it. I've already cleaned them up, including the bolts and everything. Uh, lint free, all that good stuff. Hopefully lint free as much as they can be right about now. I got them back in order the way they are. Got the rear, uh, the rear bearing. You can see the arrows point towards the front of the engine and they're numbered by the arrows. So they got three arrows, two arrows, one arrow, all the way counting down to the front of the engine. So that's how you know. Uh, basically, another way to do it is just make sure you know exactly how you took them off the engine and put them exactly back the way you got them. I have the, these bearings dry in here, inside the caps, and go through the torque specification and the torque sequence. And then we're gonna check the plastic gauge that we already put on all the main bearing turns. These be between 1,000th and 14,000th. And I think it's allowable up to like 23,000th from what the book says. Starting on the inside caps first. Moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we got these off. It's time to check our plastic gauge. We got the millimeters. 
I'm using the inches here, okay? It goes from 1,000 to 3,000. We're looking for one, 1,000 to 14,000. You notice that, I don't know if you can see that there, but that 0 .0015 is just a little bit bigger than the white section. So it looks like it's just under 0 .0015. Our tolerance was 1,000 to 14,000 or 0 .0014. And this one is mighty close to 0 .0015, but it is just a little bit bigger than 0 .0015, so it'd be less clearance because it mashed the plastic edge down more, which made it more, which made it flatter. That's the reason why 0 .001 being smaller than 0 .0015. That's the reason why, as it gets wider, that means it's got less clearance. And our nominal tolerance is between 001 and 0014, like I was saying. So even if it was right at 0 .002, it's on the it, that would be like on the maximum allowable level. Main bearing oil clearance between 0 .001 and 0 .0014. Remember, we were at just below 0 .0015 but we're um, above 0 .001, so we're like within that. But even if we were at like, let's say that we were at 0 .0016, there is an allowable amount for a little bit less than 0 .01 at 0 .0005, and, a, and more, more oil clearance at 0 .0023. We are in the nominal oil clearance for the main bearings for every single one of the bearings. With that, we're gonna wipe off that plastic gauge. Things that might give you a false reading, but that's the reason why you wanna make sure that you got all the grit out of each one of these little bolt holes for the main cap, right? If you're screwing a screw in, you feel a little bit of crunching, you might wanna go over it uh, again with a brush or something like that just to make sure that you know you're not you don't have extra oil that's in those uh, bolt holes that's gonna cause the torque to get thrown off. When you go to like 59 foot pounds, it might not be fully torqued down if you have stuff in those bolt holes because the, the extra oil, or like if you're spraying WD-40 down in there or you put in your soak, you're drenching your bolts in engine oil or something like that, that engine oil is gonna be compressing inside that screw hole and that's what's gonna be pushing up against and, it, and the main bearing cap may not be uh, completely seated with that torque specification with that or with that foot pounds of torque so the bolt might be under 59 foot pounds of torque but the main cap would not be if that was the case right okay moving on so what we're gonna do from now take this guy I'm gonna go ahead and reapply the assembly loop now we can apply the assembly loop I did a little bit too early I got ahead of myself uh, got all excited happy go lucky got my got my uh, plastic gauges I'm like, ah, I gotta take this oil off of here. I wasn't supposed to do it yet. Okay, whatever it happens, I've been doing it. <laughs> uh, so put the oil back on the main journals and on the on the uh, on the caps on the bearings, and then we're gonna put this one in. And there's, it's not really too difficult, but there, it, you're not just going in here and just starting to torque them all down to 59 in torque sequence. There's another little tiny little step just to help to reseat the thrust bearing. Okay, so we're in. Gonna... Torque down to 59 foot pounds. Torque, all right. So what I did was, is I torqued them in sequence, meaning like basically the inside out. But what I had to do was, is I torqued all these down to 59 and these only down to between 10 and 12 foot pounds of torque. All right, so the reason why I do that is because once I got all these, uh, like these, this cap to 59, that cap to 59, and this cap to 59, and this one to between 10 and 12. Once I have that, I'd give the crankshaft, I take a, a hammer, like uh, it says like a brass hammer or metal hammer, and just ping on this side, and then ping on that side. So that way the thrust bearing gets seated in, in there, and then once you hit both sides of the crankshaft, uh, not obviously not on the cap itself, but somewhere where it's not gonna damage it, once you do that, then you can go ahead and torque these down to 59. So that's what I just did there. I wanna to get to these pistons. 
I want to flip this thing around and get these pistons going. All right, so what I've done here, as you can see, uh, I did go ahead and do the plastic gauge. I put a plastic gauge on the number one cylinder's uh, connecting rod journal right there. And as you can see, we got a little wax signature from the plastic gauge right here so that we can determine whether or not there's enough oil clearance within the connecting rod bearings. Uh, so we'll get our little test strip here and match it up inches. It goes from 1,000 to 3,000 holding it up here. We are within that tolerance. Uh, I'm pretty confident. The oil should be able to clear uh, through the bearings in that journal with that connecting rod for piston uh, for cylinder number one. Now that's just cylinder number one. We still got cylinder number two right here, cylinder number three down there, four, five, and six. Basically what I did was, was I put the cap on there, torqued it down to 26 foot pounds, and then just loosened it back up and just pulled it off. And then you got your wax signature on there that you can measure up with your plastic gauge legend over there. And that'll give you a reading and you'll see if you're within tolerance. Of course, you might wanna have a Haynes manual or a really good source to tell you what that oil clearance is supposed to be. Uh, but you just do that same thing with all these. Then once you've already done your plastic gauge, what I'm gonna go ahead and do with this cylinder, with this piston, is I'm gonna wipe off that wax plastic gauge off of there and off of this cap of the connecting rod. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some assembly lube on the journal, torque her down to 26 foot pounds and move on to the next cylinder, do the same thing. All right, we got number three, third piston complete. Torque down, check the plastic gauge. Torque down to 26 foot pounds, these two bolts. And that is cylinder number five three and one about to flip her over start on two four and six all right so couldn't let you guys miss out on all the fun did a little prep work to this piston i already got three in already uh i want just want to show you my process here so either one of these two top compression rings number one and number two compression ring uh put them at 10 and two now the oil ring so here's the notch of the piston right there they would be facing towards the front of the engine. That's the notch right there. If you have the notch there, then the middle portion of the oil ring end gap is gonna be on the opposite side of the notch of the piston, all right? And then the two rings, uh, the two rings above and below the middle portion, they're gonna be uh, to the left, just right on the corner of this skirt here. And then also right over here. This little piece of technology is older in time. There's three or four of them that are commonly used. This one has just been around for a long time. So I, don't, I wouldn't do a whole lot of twisting to get it in there because then you'll move your end gap. Sometimes they can go right there where they don't need to be. All right, so now I got my piston in there. I'm just gonna crack her down. So I got her just like that in the compressor right there and I can hold it just like that. Now I want to bring over there with me my little tiny little rubber hammer because I'm going to be boom, 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 boom on the top of the piston to get it down in there. Another thing that I do is um, I turn the crank. You see that journal down there? See it moving like that? Now if I have that up like that, that means the piston's top dead center. What I want to do, since I don't want to nick it up when I'm, when I'm or run the risk of nicking it up. I try to put this thing bottom dead center, like all the way down to where it's at the bottom down there. So that way, when I'm banging it in there, I don't accidentally gouge the journal with these little uh, screw tips for the, or the connecting rod bolts. Uh, the, uh, manual says that you can put little ends of rubber hoses on the end of them so you don't do that and so you don't scar up the cylinder. Or you could just be really, really careful when you put it in there. Position it just so, just so it's like, you know, pretty flush. I mean, I'm gonna be banging it in here, and it's gonna be sliding. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be readjusting it and things like that. You know, just a little bit past flush here. I mean, it's a, 
I mean, I can hit it a little bit, knock it down. Notice the notch is facing this way. Uh, I've been I've been checking to make sure that the uh, the bottom of the connecting rod isn't hitting the journal, and it's not. So I'm just gonna flip the engine around. I'll always love doing this one-handed. All right, so I got the engine flipped the other way. I'll kind of turn the crank into it, but I'll have I'll have to hold. Basically, I'm gonna turn the crank, but I'll have to hold this while I'm turning it. Now that I got the journal met up with the connecting rod here, I'm gonna push the piston as I'm turning the crank up. So the piston will move with the crank as I'm pushing it from underneath. That's just so I know I'm not scarring it up and I can get it up here up top. Once I got it up top, I, I can lay my plastic gauge down here. And now that the plastic gauge is done, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that there's a notch side on here. You see the notch, the recess, and the notch right there. So there's also a side that looks just like that, just like this on this portion of the connecting rod, those two need to meet up. You don't want to put it on backwards, things won't work right. So since that looks like that, I'm gonna match it up, put her on there. Like I said before, it's not rocket surgery. It's not hard, but it's easy to mess up. If that makes any sense at all. I don't tighten one side all the way down first, I kind of do, I go back and forth. probably doesn't matter but that's just what I do try to keep the try to keep as even as possible all right it's 26 foot-pounds and 26 foot-pounds stick a fork in her she's done well those are we still got two more Since we got the pistons in now, now what we need to do is we need to check our connecting rod side clearance and then piston to cylinder clearance. And I'll show you how that is. It sounds really, really technical and all that stuff. It's feeler gauge and it's done. Okay, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, the specs for this particular vehicle, what they're looking for. So what we're looking for to get to make sure that this thing's gonna run properly. Uh, be back with you in a second. Piston to bore clearance for this particular vehicle needs to be between 0 0.0012 and 0 
two two. So I have a point zero zero one five. I'm gonna try to slip her in there. And I went through and checked and she just barely fits kind of snug in there. So I'm pretty confident that we got a good piston to bore clearance here. Because as, as I'm fitting all these in there, they fit pretty nicely. So what I'm gonna move on to is the connecting rod side clearance, which calls for, it needs to be between 0 0.006 and 0.014. And I'm just kind of putting it between the throws and the uh, connecting rods themselves. See, I'll put it in there. She's got, she's got room in there. 0 0.006 right here. She's fitting in there. It's in there like butter. All right, so I'm confident with the connecting rod side clearance and the piston to bore. I think we got her nailed down pretty well. And here we go. Being very gentle. You definitely don't want to rush this. Boom, like butter. All right guys, it's sunny outside. I've been cleaning. I think we made some headway here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You got that right there. You might not be able to see all that stuff. I got some pictures, some before and after pictures. Basically we got a windage tray. Oh, we got the starter over here, all right. Uh, you know, some coolant uh, fixtures right there, you know, pulleys, engine mounts over here, fully degreased, some of them WD'd, uh, crank pulley, and got the inspection cover and the plate for the, goes in between the transmission and the engine. You saw this earlier, put all the pistons in, check the clearances for the connecting rods, and for the piston to bore, and we tightened up the crankshaft before that and we put in the camshaft next thing we got we need to put in our lifters we're gonna put, set them in here and then uh lifters push rods we're getting close to the heads we're almost there i'm taking it slow well the re well i say i'm taking it slow i'm just i don't know for some reason it just i just started picking up all this momentum out of nowhere the reason why I started doing all this and getting really one because it needed to be done. I've been thinking about it the whole time, but I didn't want to like, you know, clean up all these parts and everything to find out there was something wrong with the block. And then I would need to scrap it and get a whole nother engine. Okay. Cause I was already thinking, Hey, why don't I just drop an LS into this thing? But then I pulled it out and then I was like, you know, I think these old girls got some miles on her still. Let me try to see, let me see if I can I can do something with it. So here we are. So you know we're about that's about it looks like about half an engine, yeah. And now we've got some clean parts to put back in her. We're looking even more complete. I need to swap over this water pump pulley to the new setup I got because the day before this I was working on these guys over here. A time plate cover. I relocated all my bolts for that, mocked up the new water pump over here. The reason why I don't have them put together right now, I got the gaskets and everything, I got some RTV to put them together, uh, but there's other bolts that go into the block itself and I didn't want to put uh, put this already on the block before, because I had to put the camshaft in, I still got, I got a brand new timing set that I'm gonna put in this. Guys, this is the reason why I'm rebuilding the engine because there's so many parts that I'm like, I need to, there needs to be an oil. It started with an oil change, and then it's like, it probably needs a timing chain too. Uh, these belts look like crap. We need to change out the belts. Uh, I wonder what those pistons and camshafts look like. Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm pulling the engine. 
and this is how we got to where we're at right now you know i want to look at the heads and all that stuff i was like the head gasket's probably leaking. that's why i'm just like yeah we need to pull this thing out and see i need to inspect and clean every single part uh and see see what's going on uh you know i saw something i mean pistons were they were bad so definitely putting those new pistons in there if anything else makes the engine a lot more shiny you can't doubt me on that <laughs> The engine does look a lot shinier and cleaner and so do these parts over here so hopefully i know that i'm at least going to accomplish that but i'm pretty confident that when we start this up we're going to have our problems to work through but i think i'm going to i think i'm going to get it to where this thing's running like a streamlined butterfly i think i stole that from somebody i think i'm about ready to start assembling all that stuff into the crankcase so that we can pop that oil pan back on there and then uh, not have to think about it for a little while and then we can start working a little bit more on the top end. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video, uh, leave a comment down there. I will look at it. I do answer those. Um, uh, I do take people's advice into consideration. Like, share, subscribe. Hit us up on Facebook and uh, Instagram. I'm also on Instagram, Mickey Bobby one uh, Mickey Bobby was already taken on Instagram, so Mickey Bobby one that's pretty much it for today's video. We'll see you in the next one.